the railway terminating at Yelmpton, travel to other areas of the South Hams was provided by way of a bus service from the station. This corrugated structure used by the Plymouth Co-op to house its lorries until its demolition was the former Great Western Railway's bus garage, housing feeder buses for many years. This iron shed is believed to have been used as a petrol store for the buses. And this fine specimen, photographed outside Slough Works, is a 30 hundredweight Thornycroft bus of the type that ran from Newton Ferrers and Noss Mayo to Yampton in the 1920s. A GWR rear entry bus awaits passengers at the Great Western Hotel Modbury in 1915. And finally, a GWR Maudsley Type ML3 number 1201 waiting at Yelmpton Hotel. It was not only buses that connected with the railway. Bobby used to catch this boat called Kitley Bell from Noss Mayo, and I think the one we used to catch to have a full day into Plymouth really was 20 to 11 in the morning. Um, we go from Noss Mayo if the tide was high, but if we, if the tide was down, we'd have to walk quite a way down through the woods at the end of Noss Mayo, and then to go up River Yelm, and then to get out, and that a long lane, long lane to walk, about three quarters of a mile, to get this train, and uh, plodding up there, you know, and well, it was quite a long way right, uphill too, and then get on the train, have this ride into Plymouth. And believe it or not, we used to get into the station at 12 o'clock. We hadn't been in the town, of course, then, so we had to go in the town and do all our shopping and all the ne necessary things that we had to do. But I forget the time we used to come back. I can't remember the times we used to come back. But we had the same procedure. We had to uh, get to the station, get the train, back right into Steer Point, and the boat would be there waiting for us to take us down and what a palaver it would be sometimes. If the tide was low we'd almost have to walk in the mud if you know what I mean and uh, uh, it was quite a journey actually. In fact we kids used to think it was a lovely day out, always dressed up in our best clothes to go to Plymouth. That was a wonderful thing. From February of 1960, with the closure of goods traffic, the need for public services on the railways had been overtaken by balance sheet deficits and the number crunching activities of accountants. And by 1963, the Elmton branch had suffered complete closure and demolition. But Dr Beeching could not be blamed for the loss of this line. It would be another two years before the famous Beeching plan was to be implemented, subjecting the countryside to systematic destruction and the implementation of housing estates and giant ribbons of tarmac to accommodate the ever-increasing pollution from road traffic. The friendly sights and sounds of steam trains in the countryside ended. And that was that. 